Sometimes much of what needs to be said can be crammed into a shorter space of time. Thus, this is a new series called Kai 5. Kai camera content crammed into five minutes for those with a short attention span or limited data plan. Think two minute Tuesdays without the nicely kept facial hair and less succinct speaking which requires those extra three minutes to get my point across. Anyway, time is of the essence, so let's get started. Sorry, no time for a fancy intro sequence, play the video. You know, it's gotta be said, cubes are cool. Well, if not this one, then. <laughs> or perhaps this one. But what exactly is inside the box? Yes, more full frame video goodness is always rather splendid, but I know what you're thinking. And if you're not thinking it, then I'm going to show you some previously shot footage to show you what you should be thinking. You should be thinking, didn't they release one not so long ago? Yes, it looks like that other box camera that they released before, but that had a micro full third sensor. This is essentially an S1H crammed into a cube shaped body. Yes, they squeeze an S1H in here, which means it also has the same focusing system, which, well, when it works, it always feels like something to get excited about, like a surprise birthday party. Sometimes the face detection can take a bit of time to stop getting distracted by a hat on a tripod and get focusing on the obvious face thing in the frame. Mind you, I say squeezed, a lot of the S1H parts got ditched. Because obviously there's no screen, there's no viewfinder, there's no grip, and no stabilization. It's not an IBIS kind of camera anyway. Besides, if you're using a lens with OIS, it's quite easy to get steady shots even with a slight telly. Add the e-stabilization and yes, you get a crop, but you do get footage that looks like it was shot on a tripod. So mostly you won't need the boost. But you know, with the GH version, at least they added a fan. The S1H already had one, so they've taken more stuff away. I mean, it doesn't have the convenience of the S1H because it's just a body with a sensor and some buttons. It doesn't have any kind of LCD screen to see what your settings are. So yeah, you can switch on, you can hit record, but without knowing what the settings are and without seeing what you're actually shooting, well, it's like defecating in the dark, isn't it? Wouldn't know, haven't tried. I have had a Wii in the bathroom with no lights and no windows before though. Wouldn't recommend it. Anyway, I get that it's a minimal box, but they could have at least put a little one of these on, surely. So you need your monitor and you need your battery for it, and then you're ready to get going. Well, there's lots of drilled holes all around the body as well, so you can pimp it up to your heart's content. But that's the beauty of the box. You can have it at its bare minimum basic, so you can have it mounted on a car inside or out, or you can customize it to have an ergonomically perfect handheld camera. And if you want to have a camera that is easy to balance on a gimbal or on a drone, a cube is good. Well, it has to be said that L-mount lenses are quite big and chunky that is probably quite prone to throwing the balance off a bit. This box cam is mainly for serious production stuff. Mm. And if none of that sounds like things that you'll typically do, then you'll probably want to take a snooze when you learn about how this is a good camera for multi-cam setups. And live streaming, of course, all made possible with all those multiple holes on the back for you to plug your thing in. It can be powered and controlled by Ethernet. It can be controlled via Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It's got time code in and out and Genlock. And at which point it sounds like I'm just reading a press release, which is not totally true. Anyway, they can all be output at the same time, simultaneously, at the same time, simultaneously. Anyway, one point about the SDI is that it's only 1080p. Not complaining, just letting you know, but looking at the positives, the image is fantastic from the BS1H. Up to 6K with 4K 420 10-bit 30p, 4K 60 420 10-bit and Super 35 only. Although it should be noted that the rolling shutter is quite noticeable, the video files that you get from the BS1H do look absolutely lush though, with gorgeous colours. But we should also remind ourselves that the S1H pumps out these luscious files too. Important to know if the way of the cube isn't for you. Essentially the box camera concept, while well, you don't need to learn how to love it, you either need it or you don't. I mean I've already got a box camera in the form of this thing right here which I have pimped up. Hardly ever use it because if I want a camera to take out I'd rather have the convenience of a mirrorless camera and if I want the practicality and performance of a cine camera then I'll just get a cine camera. Still coming in at approximately the same price as the S1H, at least you're not paying more for less. If you like S1H but need it to use for some serious productions, then this is kind of a blessing, especially given that this comes in at a fair few dollars less than its main competitor, and perhaps its only competitor. 